Hello, I'm now working on the color version of the Victorian trellis doily. Uh, so I've made it open, as you can see, and I'm back at round six. And round six, I don't know if you remember, I'm going to put a link to the video, the previous video I made on round six for this design. I went and joined the small ring uh, right in between, right in between the two chains here, right at the top. And it felt like the little ring was sort of either underneath or on top it you know it didn't seem to fit very well and it's probably it's probably me misunderstanding the way the pattern is written because it actually says join two ps between scallops of last row so it wasn't very clear to me what they meant um so this time i've tried joining in fact upon the suggestion of somebody who made the design from the previous video and she said that she joined hers on the two picots uh, in between the scallops of the previous row so I'll show you what I mean, because I've worked this slightly differently as well. I've made the ring as a normal ring instead of as a self-closing mock ring. So the large ring is made the same, you know, with the long chain of 17 picots separated by two stitches. And then you, you uh, curl it back onto itself. And then I've made the next four Victorian sets and I'm ready to make the small ring. So instead of making it as a self-closing mock ring, I'm going to make it as a regular ring. As you can see the way I'm holding it, normally the ring would have to be made with this left hand thread, but in fact I will make it with the shuttle thread so I don't need to have another shuttle. And so that's something you don't really normally do in tatting. I'm crossing my threads so that I can use the shuttle. And so the ring has two stitches and then three picots separated by two stitches. So that's two stitches, one pico, two stitches. One pico, two stitches, one pico, and two stitches. So that's the first half of that ring. And now I'm going to join. Instead of joining here in the middle, I'm going to make the join through two of the picots. I'm going to push my hook through the first pico on the left and then the next pico on the right and grab my thread and then come back through the same two picots like this. And then repeat the second half of the ring. I'm going to fold it out of the way, the work out of the way. And then we're making again two stitches and then three picots separated by two stitches. One pico, two stitches, one pico, two stitches, one pico, and two stitches. And close the ring. unfold it and you can see how I think the ring hangs better it's a bit lower the way it's attached to the two picots instead and I think it puts it in a better position and it also slightly tightens the row above by pulling those two rings together like this and then again I'm carrying on still looking at the front of the work because normally you would reverse work between a ring and a chain but I'm going to wrap the ball thread around my left hand and you can see again that it makes the threads cross but this is not visible at all actually when you start making the stitches so making four Victorian sets starting with four first halves one two three four one two three four I'll make the next one three four one And you can see the two chains lie nicely, even though I'm crossing my threads before and after the small ring. And now the ring is made as a regular ring instead of a self-closing long ring. So this is the way I'm doing it, the round six for this second version, the version I'm making as a collar. So I just thought I'd share with you, see if you prefer this method for making your round six. See you soon. Bye bye.